from Forest Bills. The year is 1968. Suite 719 at the Plaza. It is 3 o'clock on a warm Saturday afternoon in spring. The living room is bedecked with vases and baskets of flowers. And in the bedroom, one open valise containing a young woman's street clothes rests on the floor. The suite today is being used, more or less, as a dressing room. Since a wedding is about to occur downstairs in one of the reception rooms, the lights come up and Norma Hubley is at the phone on the bedroom, impatiently tapping on the receiver. She is dressed in a formal cocktail dress and a large hat, looking her very best, as any woman would want to on her daughter's wedding day. But she is extremely nervous and harassed, and with great cause, as we'll soon find out why. Hello. Hello, operator. Can I have the blue room, please? The blue room. Is there a pink room? I want the Hubley Eisler wedding. The green room, that's it, thank you. And could you please hurry, operator? It's an emergency. Hello, who's this? Oh, Mr. Eisler, it's Norma Hubley. No, everything's fine. Yes, we're coming right down. Yes, you're right. It certainly is the big day. Mr. Eisler, is my husband there? Would you please? Oh, well, I'd like to wish you the very best of luck, too. Borden is a wonderful boy. Well, they're both wonderful kids. No, no, she's as cool as a cucumber. That's the younger generation, I guess. Yes. Everything seems to be going along beautifully, absolutely beautifully. Oh, thank you. Roy, you'd better get up here right away. We're in big trouble. Don't ask any questions. Just get up here. And I hope you're not drunk because I can't handle this alone. Don't say anything. Just smile and walk leisurely out the door, and then get the hell up here as fast as you can. All right, Nimsy, your father's on his way up now. I want you to come out of that bathroom and get married. You hear me? I've had enough of this nonsense. Unlock that door! Mimsy, darling, please come downstairs and get married. You know your father's temper. I know what you're going through now, sweetheart. You're just nervous. Everyone goes through that on their wedding day. It's going to be all right, darling. You love Gordon, and he loves you. You're both going to have a wonderful future. So please come out of the bathroom. Mimsy, if you don't care about your life, think about mine. Your father will kill me. Mimsy? Oh God, he's here, Mimsy. Please spare me this. If you want, I'll have it enough next week. But please come out and get married. All right, I'm letting your father in, and heaven help the three of us. She, she crosses to the door and opens it, as Roy Hubley bursts into the room. Roy is dressed in striped trousers, black full coat, and the works. Why are you standing here? There are 68 people down there drinking my liquor. Is there going to be a wedding? Let's have a wedding. Come on. Didn't you hear what I said? 
There's another couple waiting to use the green room. Come on, let's go. Roy, could you just sit down for a minute? I want to talk to you about something. You want to talk now? You've had 21 years to talk while she was growing up. I'll talk to you when they're uh, in Bermuda. Can we please have a wedding? We can't have a wedding until you and I have a talk. Are you crazy? While you and I are talking here, there are four musicians downstairs for $70 an hour. I'll talk to you later when we're dancing. Come on now, get Mimsy and let's go. That's what I want to talk to you about. Mimsy? You're not going to like this. Is she sick? She's not sick exactly. What do you mean she's not sick exactly? Either she's sick or she's not sick. Is she sick? She's not sick. Well, then let's have a wedding. Uh, Mimsy, there's $200 worth of cocktail Frankfurt is getting cold downstairs. Uh, Mimsy? Where's Mimsy? Uh, promise you're not going to blame me? Blame you for what? What did you do? I didn't do anything. But I don't want to get blamed for it. What's going on here? Are you going to tell me where Mimsy is? Are you going to take an oath you're not going to blame me? I take it, I take it. Now where the hell is she? She's locked herself in the bathroom. She's not coming out. And she's not getting married. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> where is she? He doesn't believe me. <laughs> I'll kill myself. Crosses to the bathroom door and knocks on the door. Then he tries it. It is locked. Mimsy? 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 All right. What did you say to her? I knew it. I knew you'd blame me. You took an oath. God will punish you. I'm not blaming you. I just want to know what stupid thing you said that made her do this. I didn't say a word. I was putting on my lipstick. She was in the bathroom. I heard the door go click. It was locked. My whole life was over. What do you want from me? And you didn't say a word. Nothing. I see. So in other words, you're trying to tell me that a normal, healthy, intelligent, 21-year-old college graduate who has driven me crazy the last 18 months with wedding lists, floral, floral arrangements, and choices of assorted hors d'oeuvres, has suddenly decided to spend this, the most important day of her life, locked in the Plaza Hotel John. Yes, 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 yes! You must have said something. Roy, what are you going to do? First, I'm going to get the college graduate out of the bathroom. Then we're going to have a wedding. And then you and I are going to have a big talk. Mimsy, this is your father. I want you and your $400 wedding dress out of there in five seconds. Um, don't threaten her. She'll never come out if you threaten her. <clears throat> I've got 68 guests, nine waiters, four musicians, and a boy with a wedding license waiting downstairs. This is no time to be diplomatic. Nancy, are you coming out or do we have to have the wedding in the bathroom? Will you lower your voice? Everyone will hear us. Well, how long do you think we can keep it a secret? As soon as that boy says, I do, and there's no one standing next to them, eh, they're going to suspect something. You can't stay in there forever, Mimsy. We only have the room till 6 o'clock. You hear me? Roy, will you try to control yourself? All right. I'll stay here and control myself. You go downstairs and marry the short, skinny kid. What's the matter with you? Don't you realize what's happening? Yes. I realize what's happening. My daughter is nervous, frightened, and scared to death. Of what? 
Of what? She's been screaming for two years that if he doesn't ask her to marry him, she's going to throw herself off the Guggenheim Museum. What is she scared of? I don't know. Maybe she's had second thoughts about the whole thing. Second thoughts? This is no time to be having second thoughts. It's costing me $8,000 for the first thoughts. Mimsy, open this door. Is that all you care about? What it's costing you? Aren't you concerned about your daughter's happiness? Yes, yes, I'm concerned about my daughter's happiness. I'm also concerned about that boy waiting downstairs. A decent, respectable, intelligent young man who I hope one day is going to teach that daughter of mine to grow up. You haven't the faintest idea of what's going through her mind right now. Do you? It could be anything. I don't know. Maybe she's not good enough for him. Why? What is he, some kind of a Greek god? He's a plain kid. Nothing. Man, that's ridiculous. Mimsy! Mimsy, open this door! Hey, maybe she's not in there. She's in there. God, I think I'm having a heart attack. I don't hear a peep out of her. Is there a window in there? Maybe she tried something crazy. That's right. Tell a woman who's having a heart attack that her daughter jumped out the window. Take a look through the keyhole. I want to make sure she's in there. She's in there. She's in there, I tell you. Look at this. My hand keeps bouncing off my chest. Are you going to look in there and see if she's all right, or am I going to have to call the house detective? Why don't you look? Well, maybe she's taking a bath. Two minutes before her own wedding? What wedding? She just called it off. Wouldn't I have heard the water running? With that hat, you couldn't hear Niagara Falls. Are you going to look and see what your daughter's doing in the bathroom, or do I have to ask a stranger? I'll look, I'll look, I'll look! Reluctantly, she gets down on one knee and looks through the keyhole with one eye. Oh. My. God! What's the matter? I ripped my stocking! Well, is she in there? She's in there! She's in there! Where am I going to get another pair of stockings now? How am I going to go to the wedding with torn stockings? Well, if she doesn't show up, who's going to look at you? Huh? He kneels at the door and looks through the keyhole. Yeah, there she is, sitting there and crying. I told you she was in there. The only one in my family to have a daughter married in the plaza, and I have torn stockings. Mincy, I can see you. Do you hear me? Don't turn away from me when I'm talking to you. Maybe I could run across to Bird Dog. They have nice stockings. Do you want me to break down the door, Mincy? Is that what you want? Because that's what I'm doing if you're not out of here in five seconds. And stop crying on your dress. Use a towel. I, I don't have any money. Give me four dollars. I'll be back in ten minutes. In ten minutes, she'll be a married woman because I've had enough of this nonsense. All right, Mincy. Stand in the shower because I'm breaking down the door. Roy, don't get crazy. Get out of my way. Roy, she'll come out and just talk nicely to her. We've already had nice talking. Now we're going to have door breaking. All right, Mimsy, I'm coming in. No, Roy, don't, don't! Roy hurls his body led by his shoulder with full force against the door. It doesn't budge. He stays there against the door silently. A second that he doesn't react. Get a doctor. I knew it! I knew it! Don't tell me I knew it. Just get a doctor. I'm not coming in, Mimsy, because my arm is broken. Let me see it. Can you move your fingers? Are you happy now? Your mother has torn stockings and your father has a broken arm. How much longer is this going to go on? It's not broken. You can move your fingers. Give me four dollars with your other hand. I have to get stockings. Are you crazy moving a broken arm? Okay, two dollars. I'll get it 
fancy, pal. I'm not carrying any cash today. Rent it. Everything is rented. I can't rent stockings. Don't you even have a charge plate? You wait in the green room. You're no use to me here. Go wait in the green room. With torn stockings? Yeah, we'll stand behind a rented pot and plant. Listen, they're going to be calling from downstairs any second, asking where the bride is. And I'm the one who's going to have to speak to them. Me, me, me. So if that's them, you speak to them. What happened to me? 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 Just answer it, answer it. What am I going to say to them? I don't know, maybe something will come to you while you're talking. Hello? Mr. Eisler? Yes, it certainly is the big moment. Yeah, stall them, stall them. Just keep stalling them, whatever you do, stall them. Yes? We'll be down in two minutes. Are you crazy? What'd you say that for? I told you to stall them. I stalled them. You got two minutes. What do you want from me? Eh, you always panic. The minute there's a crisis, you always go to pieces. Don't you? Don't you wave your broken arm at me. Why don't you use it to get your daughter out of the bathroom? I could say something right now. Then why don't you say it? Because it would lead to a fight, and I don't want to spoil this day for you. Mimsy, this is your father speaking. I think you know I'm not a violent man. Oh, I can be stern and strict, but I've never once been violent, except when I'm angry. And I am really angry now, Mimsy. You can ask your mother. Mimsy? This is your mother speaking. It's true, darling. Your father is very angry. Yeah, this is your father again, Mimsy. If you have a problem you want to discuss, unlock the door and we'll discuss it. I'm not going to ask you to do this again. Mimsy, I've reached the end of my patience. I'm going to count to three. And by God, I'm warning you, young lady, by the time I've reached three, this door better be open. One, two, three. There is no reply or movement from behind the door. Where did we fail her? We didn't fail her. Well, they're playing Here Comes the Bride downstairs and she's barricaded in a toilet. We must have failed her. All right, if it makes you happier, we failed her. You work and you dream, and you hope and you save your whole life for this day. And in one click of a door, suddenly everything crumbles. Why? What's the answer? It's not your fault, Roy. Stop blaming yourself. I'm not blaming myself. I know I've done my best. What does that mean? It means we're not perfect. We make mistakes. We're only human. I've done my best, and we failed her. Meaning I didn't do my best? I didn't say that. I don't know what your best is. Only you know what your best is. Did you do your best? Yes, I did my best. And I did my best. And we both did our best. So it's not our fault. That's what I said before. Unless one of us didn't do our best. <laughs> I don't want to discuss this anymore. All right, then what are we going to do? I'm having a heart attack. You come up with something. How? All right, I'll go down and tell them. Tell them? Tell them what? I don't know. Those people down there deserve some kind of an explanation. They got all dressed up, didn't they? What are you going to say? You're going to tell them that my daughter is not going to marry their son and that she locked herself in the bathroom? What do you want me to do? Start with two good jokes? It, they're going to find out sometime, aren't they? I'll tell you what you're going to do. If she's not out of there in five minutes, we're going to go out the back door and move to Seattle, Washington. You don't think I'll be able to show my face in this city again, do you? 
Suddenly Roy loses control and lets his anger get the best of him. He grabs the chair from behind the dresser and brandishing it above his head, he dashes for the bathroom door. Roy! At the bathroom door, he manages to stop himself and smashing the chair against the door. Finally exhausted, he puts the chair down. Would you believe it? Last night, I cried. Oh yes, I turned my head into the pillow and lay there in the dark crying because today I was losing my little girl. Some stranger was coming and taking my little Mimsy away from me. Uh, so I turned my back to you and I cried. Where do you hear what goes on tonight? I should have invited your cousin Lily. She wished this on me, I know it! <laughs> <laughs> Do you find something funny about this? Yes, I find something funny about this. I find it funny that I had a photographer for $300. I find it hysterical that the wedding pictures are going to be you and me sitting in front of a locked bathroom door. All right, I'm through sitting around waiting for this door to open. He crosses to the bedroom window and tries to open it. What are you doing? What do you think I'm doing? <laughs> if you're jumping, I'm going with you. You're not leaving me here alone. I'm going to crawl out along the ed ledge and get in through the bathroom window. He starts to climb out the window. Are you crazy? It's seven stories up. You kill yourself! She grabs hold of it. It's four steps, that's all. It's no problem, I'm telling you. Now, will you let go of me? Roy, <clears throat> no. Don't do this. We'll leave her in the bathroom. Let the hotel worry about her. Don't go out on that ledge. In desperation, she grabs hold of the tails of his coat. You're going to rip my coat. Let go or you're going to rip my coat. As he tries to pull away from her, his coat rips completely up the back, right up to the collar. Hey, you in there. Are you happy now? Your mother's got torn stockings and your father's got a rented ripped coat. Some wedding this is going to be. He crosses back to the open window in the living room. Get out of my way. I'm getting dizzy. I think I'm going to pass out. You can pass out after the wedding. He goes out of the window and onto the ledge. Call room service. I want a double scotch the minute I get back. He'll kill himself. He'll fall and kill himself. That's the way my luck's been going all day. I'm not going to look. I'll just wait till I hear a scream. My husband's getting whimsy now. We'll be right down. Have some more hors d'oeuvres. Oh, thank you. It certainly is the happiest day of my life. No, I'm going to tell him I've got a husband dangling over 59th Street. As she crosses back across the living room, a sudden torrent of rain begins to fall. I knew it! I knew it! It had to happen! Are you all right, Roy? Roy? He's not all right. He fell! He fell! He fell! He fell! He fell! He's dead! I knew it! He's laying there in a puddle in front of Trader Vic's. I'm passing out! This time I'm really passing out! She opens the front door and Roy stands there, dripping wet, fuming, exhausted, 
and with clothes that are disheveled and his hair must. She locked the window too. I had to climb in through a strange bedroom. There, uh, there may be a lawsuit. <laughs> Don't yell at her. Don't get her more upset. <laughs> Don't get her upset. I'm hanging seven stories from a gargoyle in pouring rain, and you want me to worry about her? You know what she's doing in there? She's playing <laughs> with her false eyelashes. I'm out there fighting for my life with pigeons, and she's playing with eyelashes. I already made up my mind. The minute I get my hands on her, I'm going to kill her. Once I show them the wedding bills, no jury on earth would convict me. And if by some miracle she survives, let there be no talk of weddings. She can go into a convent. She can become a librarian and with, with thick glasses and a pencil in her ear. I'm not paying for any more canceled weddings. In a frenzy, he rushes to the table by the armchair and picks up some newspapers. Now, get her out of there, or I start to burn these newspapers and smoke her out. I I'll get her out. I'll get her out. Mimsy? Mimsy, please. Mimsy! Do you want to destroy a family? You want a scandal? You want a story in the daily news? <laughs> is that what you want, is it? Open this door! Open it! <laughs> Promise you won't get hysterical? What did you do? <laughs> I broke my diamond ring! Your good diamond ring? How many do I have? Hey, you with the false eyelashes. You want to see a broken diamond ring? You want to see $800, $1,800 worth of crushed baguettes? Here, here. This is a worthless family heirloom. And this is a diamond bathroom door. You know what I'm going to do now? Do you have any idea? I'm going to wash my hands of the entire Isley Hubbly wedding. You can take all the Eislers and all the hors d'oeuvres and go to Central Park and have an $8,000 picnic. I'm going to the Oak Room and with my broken arm and my drenched, rented, ripped suit, and I'm going to get blind. I don't mean drunk. I mean totally blind. Because I don't want to see you or your crazy daughter again if I live to be a thousand. That's right. Run out on me. Run out on your daughter. Run out on everybody just when they need you. You don't need me. You need a rhinoceros with a blowtorch because no one else can get in that bathroom. I'll tell you who can get into that bathroom. Someone with love and understanding. Someone who cares about that poor kid who's going through some terrible decision now and needs help. Help that only you can give her and that I can give her. That's who can get into the bathroom now. Uh, Mimsy, this is Daddy. Is, uh, is something wrong, dear? I want to help you, darling. Mother and I both do. But we can't help you if you won't talk to us. Mimsy, can you hear me? There is no answer. Maybe she's too choked up to talk. Uh, Mimsy, if you can hear me, not twice for yes and once for no. Good, good. Now, Mimsy, we want to ask you a very, very important question. Do you want to marry Borden, or don't you? She said yes! She said no. It was two knots. Two knots is yes. She wants to marry him. It wasn't a double knot, yes. It was two single no knocks. She doesn't want to marry him. Don't tell me she doesn't want to marry him. I heard her distinctly not yet. 
Shin went. Yes, I want to marry him. It wasn't. It was, and then another. That's no twice. She's not marrying. Uh, Menzi, could you, can you talk to, can you do that again? Can you say yes or no, please? <laughs> All right, there it is in plain English. You never could talk to your daughter. Mimsy, this is not a good way to have a conversation. Uh, you're going to hurt your knuckles. Won't you come out and talk to us, Mimsy? Don't you understand? It's probably something she can't discuss with her father. There are times a daughter wants to be alone with her mother. Mimsy, do you want me to come in there and talk to you? Just the two of us, sweetheart? Tell me, darling, is that what you want? A strip of toilet paper repairs from a under the bathroom door. Roy bends down and picks it up and reads it. What, 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 what does it say? I'd rather talk to daddy. I'll, uh, I'll try not to be too long. He opens the door and goes in. I would rather talk to Daddy. Did she have to write it on this kind of paper? Well, maybe I didn't do my best. I thought we had such a good relationship, friends. Everyone thought we were friends, not mother and daughter. I tried to do everything right. I tried to teach her that there can be more than just love between a mother and daughter. There can be trust and respect and friendship and understanding. Just because I don't speak to my mother doesn't mean we can't be different. Bathroom door open and a solemn Roy steps out, and the door closes and locks behind him. Uh, the green room, please. You have Mr. Borden Eisler. Thank you. I'm gonna have to guess. Is that it? It's so bad you can't even tell me? Words can't form in your mouth? It's so horrible, right? Come on. I'm a strong person. Roy, tell me quickly. I'll get over it. Uh, Borden, this is Mr. Hubley. Yes, can you come up to 719? Yes, now. Uh, she, she wanted to talk to me because she couldn't bear to say it in front of both of us at the same time. The reason she's locked herself in the bedroom, in the bathroom, she's afraid. Afraid? What is she afraid of? That Borden doesn't love her? Not that Borden doesn't love her. That she doesn't love Borden? Not that she doesn't love Borden. Then what is she afraid of? She's afraid of what they're going to become. I don't understand. Well, think about it. What's there to think about? What are they going to become? They love each other. They'll get married. They'll have children. They'll grow older. They'll become like us. Oh, I never thought about that. Yeah, it makes you stop and think, doesn't it? I don't think we're so bad, do you? All right, so we yell and scream a little. So we fight and curse and aggravate each other. So you blame me for being a lousy mother. And I accuse you of being a rotten husband. It doesn't mean we're not happy, does it? Well, does it? 
She wants something better. Hello, Borden. Hi. Hello, darling. Ah, uh, Borden, you're an intelligent young man, so I'm not going to beat around the bush. We have a serious problem on our hands. How so? Well, Mimsy is worried. Worried about your future together. About the whole institution of marriage. You know, we've tried to allay her fears, but obviously we haven't been a very good example. It seems that you are the only one that can communicate with her. She's locked herself in the bathroom and is not coming out. It's up to you now. Borden crosses to the bathroom door. Mimsy, this is Borden. Cool it! He then passes the hubblies and without looking at them says, See you downstairs. And he exits without showing any emotion. But then the bathroom door opens and Norma and Ray slowly turn to it as Mimsy, a beautiful bride, steps out. I'm ready now. Now you're ready? Now you come out? Roy, please. I break every bone in my body and she comes out for cool it? Oh, you're beautiful, darling. Walk with your father. I want to look at you both. That's how he communicates? That's the brilliant understanding between two people? Cool it? Roy, don't start in. What kind of person is that to let your daughter marry? Roy, don't aggravate me. I'm warning you, don't spoil this day for me. And kids today, they don't care. Not like they did in my day. Walk. Will you walk? In five minutes, he'll marry one of the flower girls. Will you walk? Crazy. I must be out of my mind, a boy like that. She was better off in the bathroom. You hear me? Better off in the bathroom.